What's up, guys? We are Item 42. We're from uh, Brighton, UK. Um, I'm Brett, uh, Brett Ware. Uh, I do all the art for Perish um, and the story and a little bit of the music and the voices of the characters as well. Believe it or not, the priestess is me, so. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'm Regan Ware. I do everything technical, the programming, all the network stuff. Oh, you'll probably see me, you know, helping any troubleshooting. So yeah, everything technical is uh, my responsibility. Rock and roll. It's our first game that we've released, and uh, we're just like overwhelmed with how many people have enjoyed it and played it. And you never really know what to expect, you know, you're full of anxiety before release for, you know, quite a while before. And yeah, I'm just so happy that so many people have played and enjoyed it. And I just like seeing their comments and seeing them talk about it amongst themselves even. Yeah, I just think it's awesome. Parish is a co-op video game. Um, you can play it single player, of course, if you want to. Um, and, it, and it works perfectly well. But, you know, for the people that want to play it in multiplayer, we have all kinds of people all around the world with different computer setups all trying to communicate with each other. So um, yeah, we've got to help people out. Our experience with the community has been fantastic. Um, people hunting down all the codex entries. I've been in and out of the forums quite a lot. We've been talking about where they are. Some of them are hidden, you know, in very sneaky places. And everyone's been like, oh, how do I get that one? How do I get this one? Um, yeah, some of them are harder than others. So we've all been having a big chat about how to find those pieces. For me, I think um, just seeing the dedication that some people have to finish every single thing in the game and understand every single thing in the game, even some of the really strange or esoteric um, Easter eggs. I've seen some amazing discussion threads that I just don't, I like to not get involved in and just, and just watch about uh, some of the crazy Easter eggs. Like there's so many theories about why corn. You'll never know. Why corn? You'll never know. You'll never know. <laughs> One of the things that you, you wouldn't think is one of the hardest things to get right, but actually it's uh, languages in the game, especially during development, because, you know, text is changing all the time. Brett's the writer, so he's always wanting to improve, you know, how things are, but at some point you have to choose, like, okay, when, when is the English ready to be translated? And, and then from then on, you can't really touch it because you'll break the, you, know, you don't want to break the translations. One thing that's really interesting about languages yeah. is, um, you know, uh, Perish, it's a shooter game, you know, and it's, 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 it's not super serious. But I tried to go quite deep with the lore, at least, so you have something to chew on in terms of, you know, finding the codex entries and the story and um, how uh, Pythia and Hipparchia the Cynic interact with you. Um, but I also have to make some decisions about, um, you know, some quite obscure things like, um, do I teach people the various inflections or various, um, like, nominative, accusative, plural versions of different words that I want to use. So, for example, the word um, danakes is the plural of, you know, so we call it danaki, so we anglicize it as a form of currency. But if you're actually speaking, um, I don't know, ancient Greek, for example, you would, if you've got loads of money, you call it danakes. People were way more interested in the codex entries than I thought they would be. Because uh, that was kind of just for me, because I just like writing and I like, you know, I like exploring Greek, Roman mythology, Christian mythology. Um, so yeah, that was kind of just for, for, for my pleasure, I guess, but loads of people like love finding the lore entries and, and, you know, there's big discussions going on in the forums like, where's this piece, where's that piece, oh, who's Hephaestus, what's that about? So that's really, that's really nice for me to see from a creative point of view. Something that was quite difficult for me was um, getting the scale of the levels right, because Perish isn't like um, it's it's like a mid movement game. So we, we take away we don't we don't want you to have like a sprint button. We want you to use the dash to kind of move around. We don't make you too fast. It's it's not like Ultra Kill. It's like it's a bit more slower and a bit more deliberate, if that makes sense. So kind of maybe more like in a Vermintide. Um, sort of movement. Mm -hmm. 
When Perish came out, um, the way the spawning worked was that enemies could sort of spawn in a circle around uh, each player, so they could come from behind you, um, you know, quite often. And for us, you know, we were sort of used to it, and we played the game so much, obviously we get very good at it. And uh, even QA, you know, they get used to some things, and it's hard. difficulty is one of the most difficult things to, uh, to sort of nail down. And uh, some people really liked the constant pressure that, uh, that the game was giving them, but some people just, they love the art so much and they want to appreciate the environment a little more, so maybe they want a bit more of a flow up and down of uh, enemies coming at them and, and maybe less enemies coming from behind them, for example. Yeah, we did in our second update, I think. We, uh, we changed the enemy spawning in the, in the base difficulties, so forgiving, tough and punishing, where enemies now spawn in sort of a cone uh, in front of you, so there's much less chance of them spawning behind you and you just getting hit in your back. And, uh, and then there's also sort of calmer moments between objectives and before objectives, uh, so you have some chance to sort of search for those secrets that you're, you know, so difficult to find, then you can appreciate the environment a bit more. And uh, yeah, once we made those changes, you know, um, lo lots of people really enjoyed that and they could have a bit more fun with the game, feeling less pressured, but you know, there are some hardcore players who they really wanted the punishing experience. So we actually made a new difficulty for them called Tartarus. Yeah, Tartarus is crazy. It's actually harder than the game was when it first came out. Enemies can spawn anywhere around you. They're faster, they're tougher, there's more of them, and uh, they can spawn closer to you, all kinds of things. So many changes. We really authored it to be a unique uh, parish experience. There's no calm moments. You're, they're coming in full force straight from the moment you step out the, uh, the airlock. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think there's going to be more updates to that as well coming in to make it even harder. So just for those people who just keep getting better, there's more to come. Yeah, so you might know um, that we're actually brothers, um, as Brett said earlier. So uh, we have quite an easy, I think, working relationship, maybe better than lots of other brothers out there. I know it doesn't look like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let everyone ask us that. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty smooth to work together, I think. We both have like the equal passion for, for games, and, and we have like really weirdly perfect um, overlap of abilities, like Brett, you know, Brett being all the artist and music and writing, and me doing all the technical stuff. Like, we sort of complement each other weirdly well. It's quite lucky, really. Yeah, we talk over Discord a lot to try and, um, like, bridge our ideas together. Yeah. We have source control, which is just a fancy way of saying everything's synced up in a cloud together. So my version of Perish is the same as Regan's all the time and other things that we're, you know, playing with at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's just like really nice and seamless and, yeah, full embrace of the internet to uh, yeah. make our video games. So we both live um, basically in Brighton, so um, we're not too far away from each other either. So if I make um, a video, for example, yeah. my internet's so bad where I am, I have to go and basically get the train to Regan, we have lunch, and then I give him a USB, like it's the 90s <laughs> or something. Yeah. Item 42, the name, is a little bit of um, kind of a silly internal thing. So um, the 42 bit um, is an obvious reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because 42 is the answer to everything. So we kind of imagine this sort of like um, archaeologist's um, treasure trove of, um, of uh, you know, kind of artifacts and stuff like that, um, all, all in drawers. And item 42 is the one that's just hidden away in a drawer somewhere, but it's the key to everything. So yeah, exactly. that's the kind of, the fun idea of that is like, oh, like, for example, like Perish, oh, we just found it in a drawer and it's, the, it's our answer to co-op. And then with the, current, with the logo we have, I, I loved it so much, I actually have a big tattoo of it on my, on my left leg. <laughs> so uh, that was a painful yeah. couple hours to get that because it's very, it's all lines and it took a long time, but the pain was worth it. Yeah, and the Labyrinth logo is kind of our sort of little harken back to um, Perish as well, because Perish has a lot of labyrinths in the game mm. and there's a lot of different ways to play it, but ultimately you have to get to, you know, the end. There's always an ending, so and there's always an exit in a labyrinth. So, yeah, sort of a harken back to um, the idea that um, we want to make story campaigns. We want to take players on a journey that has like a satisfying ending. Yeah.
When we, um, when we first started Parish, we were working for other companies. So we had our own company still, and it was still called Item 42. Um, but we sort of leased out our skills or whatever to other companies, and we made some like fun stuff. And, yeah. Uh, but our real passion was just, we want to make a video game. We want to tell a story. Um, and we want to sort of harken back to our childhood, which is playing games like Dark Messiah, Might and Magic, or you know, um, Oblivion or Skyrim, and um, yeah, just Left 4 Dead is another mm. massive inspiration. Um, so we just wanted to kind of tell stories in the vein of what we enjoyed as, as kids. So um, for about two years, we just built it yeah, on the weekend. Good. Yeah. So we would. Uh We'd uh, quite often, depending on who we were working for, because that would change a lot, you know, we might have a contract for a few months, and that few months would then pay for maybe a month of working on Parish. Um, but then we have to go back to, you know, making enough money to keep ourselves going, of course. So, yeah, we'd be working on our, on our weekends. Sometimes we'd get back from, you know, as I say, some of them we would have to travel to London for. So we'd get back six, seven, eight, and uh, start working on Parish. Yeah. And that, Which I wouldn't recommend, by the way. No, but, you know, we just definitely not. We just had to, you know, start from something. We just really wanted to get the ball rolling. Exactly. But, yeah, wouldn't recommend. It was our creative um, outlet. Yeah, really. it was like a yeah, yeah, like a foil to the kind of work that we were doing, which was a bit more like business oriented. Yeah. Exactly. So we really wanted to just be like pure game dev. Is is uh, uh, was our it was our dream. Yeah. yeah. And then and then we yeah, handy games found us really, and then. Uh, you know, we, we managed to sign, sign Parish and, and work full time on it, which for me was like already a dream come true. Now it's out and I'm like, wow, that feels like a long time ago. Yeah, so thanks so much to Handy Games as well, obviously, mm. for getting us on board because, you know, that in, it, Parish would not be possible without yeah. them in any capacity whatsoever. Yeah, so uh, Parish is coming to consoles. We don't know exactly when, but uh, we're really excited to see, you know, a bunch of new players get their hands on it and, uh, yeah. What else are we allowed to say? <laughs> yeah, I think we're allowed to say it's, um, well, I guess it's like it's public knowledge now. It's, it's uh, PS4, PS5, Xbox One X, Xbox Series S and X. It's always hard to say the Xbox Ones. <laughs> yeah, all of those, I think. So, um, yeah, we're going to do our best to try and get all of those up and running and hopefully, yeah, expand the uh, amount of people that can play the world of Parish. Oh. Yeah, so um, Perish, uh, it's out, it's, it's available, good old games, um, Epic Games Store, and then Steam is, you know, where everyone's playing at the moment, so whatever your chosen platform is, please just go and have a look, watch the videos, read the text, have a look in the forums to see if it's your kind of game, and please just give it a download, give it a try. We'd be, we're just so excited to see where Perish is going to go in the next few months, and yeah, just thanks so much for watching as well. Yeah, just give the game a go, and for those who already have, there's more content coming, so get excited. Yeah, see you in Elysium. <laughs> <laughs>